Today we're going to be looking at the Productivity 1000 series PLC and documenting the program. Now last time we developed our first program which was a start stop of the motor. So a simple start stop circuit. And what you'll see up on my screen now is our program that we actually uh, made. And we are connected to our, our PLC through our Ethernet port and our project status is saved. We are online and up to date and uh, our run transfer is available. So the status line here will indicate where you are uh, with connection to or in relationship to your PLC that you have. So what we'll do is uh, um, just show you the uh, our PLC here and there's my Ethernet port here and my USB port right here. So currently right now I look at my program and it's not very uh, readable per se and anyone uh, that comes in and looks at it would be have a hard time understanding exactly what this is doing. So what we're going to do is change that by doing the document or documenting the program so that it's easier to read and easier to find additional information that we need in order to successfully um, monitor, um, create uh, other rungs or uh, modify our existing rooms. So if we go to the applications tool and we go down to the tag database or what we could do is go to the um, edit and then go to tag database. This will bring up our tag database itself. Now in here it uh, has a lot of different rungs and everything but what we're going to do is just look at our discrete inputs and outputs that we have. So what we're going to do is um, invert so it means that everything's off and then what we'll do is turn on just the inputs and outputs so to the far right what you'll see is a column that says uh, is being used by the program and what we're going to do is just move that over so that we can uh, see it more readily here and what we can do is on any of these columns we can right click and we can hit auto size and it will actually auto size that uh, rung for us. So that's my in use. Um, we'll auto size this one as well. And that gives us our IO address. This is our discrete outputs first, and this is our name. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to sort this by in use. So as soon as we double or click the column, it sorts it um, descending then ascending or vice versa. And now it tells us the order in which we have. So we have our output here and we have our two inputs. So we'll double click on the name and for this one here we'll call it motor. And then we'll have our, our first input which will be our start. And then we'll have our stop. So there are three contacts or three information there. Now what we can do is also go over to where it says can be forced. And what we'll do is drag that column over. And the column name is actually forcible. So later on we'll, we'll be able to, uh, when we're online, to actually force this uh, contact on and off through the Productivity Suite programming software. So we'll, we'll turn on the motor and we'll turn on the start. We'll leave the stop the way it is so it's unforceable. So that's everything we need to do right now for the tag database. We have a new name for it. So when we close this down by using this upper uh, X here in the right corner, you'll notice that our program now has changed and it looks a little better and now we can um, truly just understand exactly what's going on now in our program. Now the second thing we're going to do is look at tasks. Now tasks are over here in our task management. And here we have our start stop motor and we can see it's running every scan. Um, we also have other um, areas in which we can put this under task management. We can run for, for the first scan only. That's ideal for resetting certain values during the initial uh, boot up of the PLC. We have run every second. That's ideal for doing things like math that, that uh, we don't have uh, um, 
We don't have to wait or we don't have to do it every scan. We can just wait every second and do it. And then we have uh, run when called and we have disabled task. So as we develop our program, we can put them on disabled tasks and then move them into our program as we go along to, um, as we develop our program. So under uh, runs uh, start stop motor, if I want to change that to run, uh, run first scan only, we can just click and hold and then drag that up to run first scan only. You'll see it automatically will change that. And you'll also notice up here, it says run first scan only. But we're going to run this every scan. So we'll turn this back down to run every scan. And it, sure enough, it does exactly what it does. And it shows us up here um, how it's actually controlling that task. Now, if we click on the actual task, we have it named already. How we did that was we right click on it. And you'll see the uh, rename task that will come up on the menu. When you do that, you'll see that you're now able to uh, modify this name. Now we're going to leave it the same. Now the next thing we can do is actually go down to Task Properties. And under Task Properties, we're actually allowed here to uh, name it. This is another way of naming it. We can put in a comment. And this comment here says this task is to start, stop the motor. This is a Task Properties comment. We also have Author. So you can have several people working on different tasks within your program itself. And in order to understand who's actually uh, designing and programming that task, you can put an author's name in here. Then we have a run rule. Again, instead of uh, uh, moving it within the task manager and clicking and, and dragging it, we can actually uh, select it here as well. So we can select whatever one we want. We're going to leave it right now at run um, every, every scan. The other two options we have is background. We can actually change our background. This is the background of the entire task here. It kind of highlights um, if we wanted to um, where or uh, anything particular about this uh, 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 task itself. So we can make it any color we want. Right now we're just going to leave it as default. So we're just going to cancel that. And then our wire. Now this is our connections between all of our instructions here. We can actually change that color again. So background and the wire we can change. And again, it gives us this uh, color chart that we can actually uh, pick what color we want to do. So we're just going to cancel that again. And so that's, uh, that's under task properties. So we'll just hit OK. And what you'll see is that um, we can actually under our icon within our task itself, you, there's a task comment. If we click it, it will now show us that comment within our task itself on our, our ladder editor window. So again, our program is looking a little better, um, a little more readable. The next thing we can do is put in run comments. Now our run is just like it is right now, highlighted. And you can see that's my, my rung itself. Now I can make a comment just about that rung. So if I right click on it and go down to edit comment or rung comment, it will allow me now to enter a comment about my uh, circuit. In this case here, I put start stop motor control circuit. This, this rung comment is very important to uh, now document each rung within that task so that when you're reading it, it reads like a book. So we can modify, change that, make it longer if we want, and we'll just hit OK. Now if we look over here again on the rung, uh, on the icons on our task, you'll see a rung comment. We can highlight it, and once again, just like the um, task comment, my rung comment now appears on my ladder editor window. So each one of these can now have um, a rung or a comment on that rung. Now a quick way to actually call up that instead of um, right clicking every time is you'll see the space in between or the top of every rung. If you just double click on it, it will call up the rung comment uh, editor so where you can actually edit the rung comment. And so if we go to the second line, double click it, Again, we can now enter a comment for this rung. 
very quick and easy way to doing it. That's as long as your icon here for wrong comment has been highlighted. Now, if you want to see all your wrongs and all your comments at once, if we go to the edit and then you'll see wrong comments or we have control K. What that will do is bring up a another window here that will show us all of our wrong comments that we have within the start stop motor task. So we have all of this and what we can do is we can just double click or click on each, each one and either add, subtract or put additional notes on, on that particular rung. So we'll close that down by hitting the X in the upper right corner. So that is our, our uh, rung comments. Now the next one is going to be instruction comments, which are kind of unique. What, you, what it will allow you to do is to create a comment about the instruction, which is really the location in which you see each of these um, instructions in our, in our rung within our task. So if I hit on start, there is my uh, start comment here. And what I'll do is I'll hit show instruction comment. And now I can write particular information about that location of that uh, contact point. So in this case here, we'll put uh, the switch. We'll start the motor. So that is my instruction comment. And then we'll hit OK. And what you'll notice now is you can continue and you can put uh, comments on each one of these contacts that are these instructions that we have here. Um, for example, the motor, we call it up and we've actually added that already. It's basically a ceiling contact from the motor. This will keep the motor on when the start switches off. So we'll say OK for that. And you'll see on the, on the left hand side of the rung, this indicates that we haven't saved or we haven't transferred our program over. So let's save it first. Hit that save project. And what you'll notice is they now change the symbol now changes. And if we look at that symbol, now it's not transferred to the controller yet. So what we'll do is now transfer that to the controller. It'll compile it and then transfer it over. And now that symbol disappears. So now our controller and the information we see on our screen are identical. Now looking over here, we have an instruction comment that we can actually turn on. And when we do, again, we get additional information in those instruction comments that we have that'll give additional information to the, to the person looking at our program. And it'll see the, the, does the motor contact, etc. You'll see that I have to now scroll across because we have so much uh, uh, verbiage there. We can also hit the fit the width, which actually uh, condenses a little bit um, so we can actually look at it a little uh, better. And so that is our, our uh, commenting. Now, the last thing we do is we have this uh, tag details and the tag details will actually call up the details within the, the tag of the tag database which shows us the address in which that contact is. So if we look at this switch we'll start the motor it's a start uh, name of it and now it tells us that's the digital input uh, system number zero it's the um, uh, the first uh, PLC or the first rack. It's the third one over and it's the first switch that we're looking at. So the digital address will also appear when we hit the tag details. So when we, let's just turn off the um, uh, instruction comment. That just reduces a little bit and we can see that this is a very nice way of looking at the program. And we can hit monitor and we can actually take a look at our program and we'll turn this on our motor comes on we turn the stop switch off the motor still stays on and the motor will stay on until i hit my stop switch which then stops that turn it off 
and we're back to the start again. So lots of ways of documenting your program. Now all the links can be down and uh, download for this program can be found on our website at accautomation.ca. If you like this video and like to see more, there are three ways in which you can help us out. You can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information just as you have. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at the end of the video. You can also go to accautomation.ca and subscribe to our website. When you do, notification will be given to you every time we publish new content to the site. You'll also get two free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And the third thing to do to help us out is to tell a friend or colleague about the site. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.